right. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance or the realization of what you've hoped for, the evidence, the actualization, the manifestation of what you have not seen. Lord, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable um, in your sight. You're my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Always a pleasure to have Pastor Ryan in the house. Amen. I, uh, good to see you, man. Although I'm a little less excited to see you because you don't have the girls with you. So it's, it's cool seeing you, but I kind of like the whole family, you know. But uh, either way, man, we love you, bro. We love you. Faith, faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Today I want to talk to you uh, from the title of um, The Truth about faith, the truth about faith. Um, we hear this word faith bandied about and we talk about it. It's one of the um, most used words in the Christian um, conversation. Faith, 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 faith. I have faith. Do you have faith? Where is your faith? Whose faith do you, are you leaning on? Faith, 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 this hope, this belief, faith. You have faith? Do you have faith? What is your faith in? Who is your faith in? Everybody moves in faith. You sat down on that chair having faith that it would hold you. Faith. When you got in your car, you had faith, most of us, that when you turned the ignition that the car would start. Most of us. I'm, 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 my, my Acadia is not giving me a little trouble, so my faith is wavering a little bit uh, lately. So faith, but for the most part, when you go to the drive-thru to get some food when you leave here, I'm not judging you because I'm probably going to do the same thing. So this is not a judgment statement. It's, a tr it's just a fact. When they hand me my bag, I have faith that what I ordered is in the bag, which is why when I go home, and I open said bag, and the order is not correct, I think of that scripture, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Because now I have to decide, am I going to get up and drive back to the spot and, and get, get my, by that time I just want to eat whatever's in the bag and I'll just be upset and I'll go to bed. But faith, I got faith that when my wife cooks, that it's going to be good. I got faith. Faith. We all function and operate with faith. Here's the problem. When it comes to having faith in God, I don't think we have a clear or a complete understanding of what it is. My brother, can you hand me that, that baseball bat right there? Thank you. What's funny? It's my baseball bat right here. Or my golf club. Right? It's my golf club. Go ahead and drive a few balls. I don't have any balls right now, but if I did, I would use this golf club. Now, you guys laughed because you know this is not a golf club. Now, I could probably hit a ball realistically. Probably wouldn't go very far. It probably wouldn't go where I want it to go. But it serves a purpose, but it, it would hit the ball. Likewise, I, if, I, if I took this to the batting cage, and I wanted to hit a few balls. More than likely, I, could, I would hit a few balls. I probably would hit some. But I'd probably hurt my hand in the process. The ball probably wouldn't go as far it was intended to go. The crutch would probably break. Because I'm using this tool in the wrong way. I'm not using this crutch in the way that it was designed to be used. And that's how we do with faith sometimes. We use it in the way that it wasn't designed to be used. And then 
we become disappointed when we don't get the results that we want. It's like me going to the batting cage and, I, and, I'm, and I'm frustrated with the bat because I'm not, I'm not knocking home runs. I'm not hitting them out the park. Well, this is not a bat. It's, it's a crutch. And I want to talk to you just for a few moments because I believe that some of us are, are using faith like a bat when it wasn't intended to be that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I love talking about faith. Here's why the Bible says without faith, it's impossible for you to please God. So it is the ethos of of the relationship that you have with God. Why? Why? Because you can't see God. You read in your word that Jesus died on the cross and based upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection, you now have access to right relationship with God. If you what? Believe. But you've never actually seen the cross. Oh, you wear it on your chain. But you've never actually seen Calvary's cross and the blood that flowed from Emmanuel's name. You weren't there like Mary and Martha when they saw the stone being rolled away. You weren't there. And so everything that you stand on is by faith. The Bible says, uh, I believe it's in uh, in, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It talks about faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is what? Love. The chapter is talking about love, but it's talking about a natural, earthly type of love. Right? So my wife, she has faith that who I present her is who I actually am. That that the, the guy who opened the door for her and the guy who pulled out the chair for her at the restaurant and the guy who goes to church and he prays, that the essence of that individual, she has faith that that is who I am, not who I'm pretending to be. She has faith in that. And so based upon that faith, she says, you know what, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And so now she's hoping, she's hoping that who I said I was, I'm going to be. Because, just like the vows you take for good, for bad, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, she knows that she's taking a risk. But she's hoping that what she's put her faith in will not let her down. You've been in relationships before. When it's good, it's really, really good. And then when you hit that That moment where it's like, hold on, wait a minute. I don't feel butterflies, I feel anger. So faith in the core of who I am, hope that in the bad times I will still be that person, but then now she has to choose that even if you're not, I'm going to love you anyway. That's the vow we made. And I made the same vow for her. So so faith, hope, Love, and the greatest of these is love. Now, here's the deal. Here's the twist, and this gets into my topic today. That's this relationship. It is a choice, choosing to love even if the person you said you were, you're no longer that person. Choosing to love. The way it works vertically, though, is here. Choosing to have faith. Choosing to have faith because the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. It was not based upon faith in who I was. He didn't know. He had no idea who you were going to be and if you were going to choose him when it came your turn. But he chose to love you regardless. And he had hope that when your turn came, that she would make the choice 
to make Jesus Lord of your life. And so now we start from a position of faith. Because everything that was made available to you, you weren't there when it happened. Your sin was there. Your shame was there. Your bad choices were there. But you weren't there to physically see it. (laughs) And so now what you're left is with either you believe it or you don't. Faith. Now faith is the substance of what I wasn't around to see. Faith is the belief that Jesus did a thing for me and I receive that and I live my life based upon what he made available to me. Are you with me so far? Are you with me so far? All right, okay. So I want to just give you a few things about what faith is not. And I think sometimes, this is, and this is why so many people are falling away from the church and falling away from relationship because they have a bad understanding of this posture of what faith and belief in God is. I'm going to give you three quick points, and we're going home. Are we going to Chick-fil-A or whatever you want to do? <laughs> faith is not insurance. It is assurance. Faith is not insurance, it is assurance. Philippians 1, 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work will complete it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, so so, so here, here's the challenge. Um, for many of us, when we pray, it's not really prayer. It's, it's kind of like, um, uh, it's kind of like worry and, and my own desire uh, kind of clothed in this sort of religion tradition and I present it before heaven. My own selfishness. My own lustful desires. The things that I want. But, 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 but if we understand Philippians 1, 6, that, that, that he who began a good work will complete it until the day that Jesus comes, I understand that insurance says if something happens, um, that there may be, there may be some, some recompense. But assurance says something will happen. And I've already made a way because my grace is sufficient for you. Oh, something's going to happen. You go, you're going to make a bad decision. You're going to make a choice that is contrary to who God wants you to be. But he says, I've already made a provision for you to come through and still be pure gold, not because of your righteousness, but because of my righteousness. See, we hear this all the time about you're not saved by works, but we're still working. We're still working. Some of you all are here tonight because you, because you did something bad this week and you, wanna, and you want Jesus to forgive you, so you came to church tonight. I heard it. Ouch. I heard it. I heard somebody was like, ouch, that's me. And Jesus says, I've already, made an, I've already assured you that my grace is sufficient because I knew that you were going to have a bad day. I don't want you to. But, but, but faith says, I believe that because I am clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and I, I'm clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that I can walk in freedom. Freedom from the mistakes that I've made and the mistakes that I will make. The Bible says, if Christ has set us free, then why should we be bound? I can sense the heaviness when I talk to some people I can sense the heaviness you walk around with because you're walking around with so much guilt and so much shame and and you're still you're still being plagued by who you were because you don't have faith in what Jesus made available you're still trying to prove to Jesus that you're worthy to be redeemed And Jesus said, you don't have to prove to me. You just have to believe that I have redeemed you. So it's not insurance, it's assurance. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's, it's not a, it's not like a, a, you know, you get into a car accident, right? And the first thing you do is what? You call your insurance company. 
Hopefully, you're not trying to fight the person who hit you. You call your insurance company. And they, or, you, or if you have a situation with your home, you call your insurance company. And the first thing they do, they check your policy to see what you're qualified for. And then you spend the better part of the year trying to, trying to prove to them that they need to give you more money to get what, what, was, what is broken fixed because I'm paying insurance. And Jesus says that's not how it works in the kingdom. You have assurance. You walk with assurance. You live with assurance that what I, what I did over 2,000 years ago is available to you now. Number two. Faith is not cash in the bank. It's a promissory note. Faith is not cash in the bank. It is a promissory note. 1 John 5, 14 says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything, watch this, according to his will, he hears us. So faith is not cash in the bank. I, I, I got to... I went to the ATM before I came here. And uh, let's see here. I got 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. Oh, there it is. A million dollars. I got it right here. A million dollars, 600 right here. A million, 600 dollars. I'm balling. This is what we do. We're in Christ now, so we're balling. So anything I want, I can have it. Anything I want, I can have it. Because he owns, the Bible says he owns a cattle and a thousand hills. So anything I want, I can have it. And we take that cash and walk around, we flaunt it. Yeah, I want this, I want a million dollars. I want, I want a fancy car, I want a big house. I want a fine wife. I want this, I want that. I want healing for my, for my spouse. I want all of these things. And so we just start doing this. We start... Just making it rain. We just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I got faith. I got faith. I got faith. So we throw faith at a problem. And then when the situation doesn't turn out the way we want it to, we're perplexed. Because I have faith. And Jesus is like, that's not how faith works. It doesn't work like that. Faith works like a promissory note. You know what a promissory note is? Well, uh, a, a few years ago, me and Dee bought a house together. Me and my wife bought a house together. And uh, when we're looking, where we were looking at in Jersey, it's a pretty competitive market. And so what they tell you is you have to, um, you can't just say, I like this house. Can, we, can, can I put an offering on this house? You can't do that. The way that it works, where we were trying to buy, you have to submit your best and your final by a certain day. There's no negotiating. There's no back and forth. So they were like, well, how much do you want to put down? All these different questions. So the realtor says, hey, guys, the loan that you're trying to qualify for, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to do. What you need to do is go to the bank and get what's called a promissory note. What a promissory note does, I go to the bank, and the bank says, okay, based upon your credit and based upon your income and based upon, you know, both of y'all's income combined, you qualify for this amount. And so if you find a house... Here is your letter. It's, it's a legally binding letter that you can take to the potential seller, take to the real estate agent and say, here, um, the bank has told us they will lend us this amount of money. When I got the promissory note, because I really didn't understand how it all the way works, so when they gave me the promissory note, I was like, ooh, yeah. I'm about to go make it rain. So what I'll do is I'll buy a house for 50% of this, and then I'll use this other half to go do some other fun stuff with it. Doesn't work like that. I have to use the money for the house. Whatever I don't use for the house goes back to the bank. It's not like, remember, you know, when you go to college and you get that, that, that uh, FAFSA check, you know, and, 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 you know, they gave you a check and after you paid your tuition, you got a few hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars left over. And instead of giving it back to the government, you say, let me go ahead and do something with them, buy some clothes and I'll buy some of this. And then at the end of your college career, you got a big fat loan. And you got gray hair now, but you're still paying that loan off because you didn't give that money back when you should have. The promissory note doesn't work like that. Promissory note says if the house is 500000 and we give you a check, I mean, we give you a promissory note for five fifteen. that means if the house is 500000 we're going to give you a check for, up for $500,000. 
and then there's appraisals, and all these things that go on. That's kind of how heaven works. So I walk around the world, I walk around doing life with the promissory note in my back pocket. Because God says, I'm able to do anything. And you walk with the provision of heaven, you walk this life with that promissory note that you've got from the bank of heaven that says, I'm able to heal, I'm able to restore, I'm able to give you peace, I'm able to fix your marriage, I'm able to bring your kids back, I'm able to do this, I'm able to, heal. I'm, I'm, I'm able to give you peace that surpasses all understanding, I'm able to give you all of that. That's the promissory note that you have. But the text tells me right here, if we ask anything according to his will. So can I get real kind of kind of dark with you a little bit? So you go to the go to the hospital and you're praying for a loved one to recover. So you bring your cash to the hospital. You're saying, God heal him. God heal him. God heal him. And you're throwing, you're throwing faith at it. But because your heart it's not turned towards heaven. Your heart is turned towards your own selfishness. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. I can't live without you. So it's not even about, and I'm not, I'm not even saying that that's a bad thing. To ha- I have, I've had that same thought when my grandmother passed away. But what I'm saying is, when we go in with the, with, with the, with the faith cash, and we drop it all on the bed, God do it, God do it, God heal, God heal, God heal, and God heals in a different way. God heals through transition. We can't stomach that. So we believe that God has failed us. We believe that, that what is the purpose of this faith if I can't use it when I need it the most? But we forget. We forget that the faith has nothing to do with what you want, but it has everything to do with God's will. I said this to a friend of mine the other day. I said, you know, he, he, he lost, um, well, she, they lost an, an aunt. And they were, they were angry at God. And I said, well, what do you want to happen? Did you want them to, 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 to be healed? And then when is the transition point? When would you like the transition point to be? Would you like it to be when, when, you know, after you die? Then you would feel like God loved you? And we've got to come to the realization that sometimes we pray selfish prayers. We, 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 we want faith to work on our behalf for us without any consideration about God's will. Without any consideration about his divine plan for the world. Because you've been told that God loves you and he, he cares for you and so there's no good thing that he will withhold from you and so, and so we give you all the lollipops and the rainbows but we don't talk about the real. But listen, sometimes you're going to pray for things, you're going to ask God for things and it's not in his will for your life to have. But if I say that too loud, you might not come back to church. And so now you're going back home, struggling with God. You said that you would give me the desires of my heart. The pastors told me that you would give me all the things that I want, and now I want this, and it's not happening. And so we're not teaching a complete understanding of what faith is. Faith is not making God your personal jackpot machine. Faith is an understanding to say, I partner with heaven. And manifesting, not my will, but thy will be done in the earth. And sometimes that happens with tears. Sometimes faith will say, no, you can't leave. No, you can't leave that job just yet. No, you can't give up on that business just yet. Because you're partnering with heaven. My last point. Faith isn't a bargaining chip. It's a partnership. 
Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, how can two walk together unless they what? Agree. Faith is my, ag- faith is my agreement to trust God's way and not to get out of the way. Because we say, that, no, just get out of the way and let God be God. That sounds cute and that sounds fun. But guess what? The glory comes not when you get out of the way, but when you say, God, I don't like this, but I trust your will. What do I need to do? What do you need me to do? If you've been in a meaningful relationship, whether you've had kids, or you've, you're married, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's sometimes that you have to be a part of the healing process. Even though you're right. Fellas like, amen. They don't want to say it too loud. They're like, amen. If you have meaning, if you're in covenant relationship, there are times that the Holy Spirit says, I need you. Because there's an area in this person's life, in your friend, in your spouse, in your child's life that needs to be built up. And you can't just walk away from them. It's like, but God, they hurt me. They offended me. But faith says, I understand. I understand that there's a greater work. There's an assignment here. And I want to be a part. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Some of us are leaving relationship before we can see the manifestation of God's work being revealed. Some of us have given up on our children before we can see the manifestation of God's God's love being revealed. And so faith is not just so you can get what you need. Faith is so you can trust God to do what you need to do. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So guess what? Your last name is Jesus. You're Brooke Jesus. Bunch of little Jesus is all up in here. How I wish that this cup would pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. What if Jesus was like, yeah, you know what? I have faith in you, God. I'm going to get out the way and let you do it, God. What if Jesus had done that? We would still be here with a bunch of calves and cows and goats, bring it to the altar. And Pastor Dan and, 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 and David have to clean all that blood and that mess up every week because y'all done brought all of these animals here to sacrifice for your sins and atone. If Jesus had gotten out the way. But thank God he chose to partner with heaven and say, I have faith. I have faith in knowing that, that my will, <laughs> my will is not what it's about. It's your will that I'm after. Can you say that? Are you saying that in your life? Are you after God's will? And sometimes you say that in this moment, Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, the Bible says you prayed until tears, blood flowing. Because faith sometimes isn't always about getting what you want. Most of the time, it's about trusting God to do what you need to do so that his glory can be seen. So that his glory can be revealed. The temporal things that we spend our time fasting and praying on, God's like, that's not where I'm at. I'm thinking about eternity. And so faith is not Las Vegas, you know, it's, it's not a Las Vegas experience, y'all. Faith is standing flat-footed and believing that what you're hearing from the Holy Spirit and what he's done for you and what he's made available to you, I am willing to yield to that. I'm willing to pick up my cross every day in every situation and follow. The other day I was driving to New York City. This is a true story, y'all. I was driving to New York City and somebody uh, jumped in front of me. And I'm probably one of the most chill dudes you ever meet. Chill. I'm probably one of the most chill dudes you'll ever meet. I don't deal with road rage. I don't, I'm not that guy. Somebody jumped in front of me. And the best way to describe it, you, you know the Incredible Hulk, right? Like, you know that, like, 
on the first Avengers. You remember that? Like, you know, when he was smashing the cars and like, like jumping from like skyscraper. I was that dude. And I was in my SUV and I was like gunning it on, on Sawmill Parkway. I was going to find this dude and track him down and like scare him to death. And, and, and all of a sudden I was like, who are you? Who are you? And in that moment, the Holy Spirit checked me like faith, faith in believing in the finished work of the cross is a daily decision. Because the old me, my flesh, every day is looking to rear its ugly head. And what I'm finding out, and y'all didn't tell all my, my, my seasoned saints, y'all didn't tell me this. But when you get older, as you get a little bit older, your, your patience, you, you, stop, you, stop, you, don't, you stop caring about like how you say it. I didn't know that. You, you stop worrying about like being super tactful. And you just say it how you feel it. I didn't know. Y'all didn't tell me this at all. I, I blame y'all. <laughs> but understanding that my faith, watch this, my faith in God is not for me. My faith in God says I believe and I trust you. So you lead me. You guide me, you direct me, I'm going to put my hope in you. My trust is in you, my hope is in you. So don't, don't let faith be, don't, let, don't work faith in a way that it wasn't intended to work and then you're disappointed when you don't get the results. Faith is dependency on God. It is a reliance of knowing that I do have an answer, but what does heaven have to say? I've got a plan, but God, what do you want? Ladies, let me give you a trick, and we're, gonna be, and we're done. If you're married, I want to give you something that's going to gonna revolutionize your marriage, I promise you. DeAndre, if you're watching, Listen. Submission, listen to me. We know that you guys are smart. My wife is much smarter than me. Matter of, Lisa, edit that out. Can we, can we, let me start over. <laughs> no, my, my wife is brilliant. But what gives me butterflies and goosebumps and, and, and makes me want to like tackle a lion for her is when she says, what do you want to do? When, when I'm driving and I decide to take a different route, like, she's like, why are, you, why are you taking that route? Instead of her just being like, if she just like, you know, are you going this way? Cool, all right. It does something to me on the inside. Like, I get swollen in my chest. I'd be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> and then it makes me want to go above and beyond because for me as a man, her trusting me communicates love. Fellas, y'all missed y'all chance to shout right there. When, 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 when my wife communicates that she trusts me, it commun with that she has faith in my ability to lead the family. Are you hearing me? It, it does something to me on the inside. And now I want to do for her. It makes me all, all the more motivated. And that's how Jesus says, he says, if you're faithful over the little things, I can trust you. The big things. Let's stand to our feet. So where is your faith? Do you need to deconstruct your idea of what faith is? Because you've been going through life feeling like God has been disappointing you. Feeling like God's been letting you down. When the reality of it is, he hasn't been. But he's not going to forsake his divine plan for your comfort. And that's a tough pill to swallow but let me bring it down to a fraction. If he sent 
his son to die, do you think that he's really that worried about your comfort? Your comfort. He sent his son to die for you, but now you need to be comfortable. Nope. Nope. And so what we get to do, what we get to do by faith, we get to partner with heaven. And the more that we're willing to yield to that, the more we'll see the manifestation of his greatness in our lives. But we've got to be willing to trust. We've got to be willing. That's it. There's a song that says, only believe, only believe, all things are possible if you only believe. Now, the things are not your things. And that's where the beautiful thing about hope, faith comes in is because God's things are better than your things. So fix how we see faith. Readjust your filter. Faith is simply saying, God, you know what? This world is crazy. I don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm going to just trust you with it because I know that you've seen my end. And I know that you want to give me a hope and a future. I know that there's no good thing that you would keep from me. I know that your plans for me are to prosper me. Even as my soul is prospering. So you know what I'm going to do, God? I'm going to just rest. I'm going to just rest. Because there's not one thing that I've been able to change in my life because I've been worrying about it. Not one thing. So my faith is in the one who holds tomorrow. Lord, we thank you. That faith rises up. That faith rises up in us. To believe all of you. To believe you as we enter into our Canaan land and our Canaan season. And to believe you in the valley of the shadow of death. To believe you when all hell is breaking loose around us. To believe you and to trust you in our winning season. Thanks so much for watching. If this message encouraged you, be sure to join again at one of our many church online experiences live every weekend. Just click watch live in the description below. If you'd also like to learn more about getting involved here at Faith Church, click the connect button. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single video. Maybe even share it with one of your friends. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember with Jesus, you are destined to win.